Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Andy Lombard, Executive Vice President of the Arizona Commerce Authority, and welcome to our Arizona Commerce Authority Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective. Uh, we're going on our third week, and we've had some great information provided and some really good information today on restaurant openings. Um, and thank you again to Local First Arizona for all the work that they're doing and also providing this information with our team today. Uh, and all of our other partners, this has been a fantastic resource collective. Uh, we're awfully excited about sharing all this information with everybody. Um, the ACA, Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective, is designed for small businesses during this COVID crisis. It's a statewide initiative with our community partners. We're running it for six weeks. We have actually decided we are going to extend this into the month of June. We'll have some more information for everyone on that. Um, but also check out our website for the resource collective information as we start to pull that together as well at azcommerce.com slash COVID. Our sessions uh, so far this week have been fantastic. We've went through uh, looking at loan forgiveness for PPP on Monday, um, a fantastic session on managing your employees during the crisis uh, yesterday. And today, today we're preparing the restaurant industry for a reopening. Uh, come visit us tomorrow. We have two sessions on returning to work safely from the National Safety Council, Arizona chapter. We have a 9 a.m. and a 3 p.m. Um, topic session on that. That's gonna be very important. And then we have also uh, changed our Fridays to marketing. Uh, for the next few weeks, we're gonna do marketing on Friday. We have uh, three really fantastic experts on marketing. We're gonna run a panel uh, with Q&A and some significant information around uh, launching marketing activities during this time. Um, we want to give an update. I'm going to ask uh, Robert Theobald, our Vice President at ACA for Small Business and our state's Ombudsman for Small Business to give us an update on both PPP, IDLE, and some new uh, executive orders that were announced yesterday. Robert? Yeah, so uh, the PPP update for round two, as of May 10th, we had mentioned before that there was $122 billion. Um, Robert, you're on mute or we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, so the PPP update uh, on the 10th, there was $122 billion. They're projecting still over $100 billion remaining. Um, as of today, we haven't gotten the, the release numbers from the SBA, but that projection is based on the previous uh, volume and how it's been uh, being used. Um, when you look at rounds one and two for Arizona, we had over 70,000 small businesses uh, get PPP loans, totaling more than $8 billion. Um, we're still a top 16 state uh, for the number of business loans and the number of funds approved. So uh, very positive there. Um, the idle number is still 52,000 plus Arizona businesses at 176 million. And that's just on the advance. Uh, we have not received the information on how many idle loans have gone to Arizona yet. Um, so barbers and salons already opened on the 8th. Restaurants on the 11th uh, had the ability to open. And starting today, pools, gyms, and fitness pro um, providers uh, and spas can open as long as they're following the physical distancing and hand sanitation uh, guidelines. Those guidelines can be found on the governor's website and I'm going to post right now in the chat bar the link to that to yesterday's executive order that has the links to the guidance on those different industries on how to open. Um, Perfect. Thank you. So Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Thank you so much. And just to uh, make another note that the azgovernors.com website that you have here listed has all of the different guides. We'll uh, post those again uh, as we're going through today's session, but we'll also uh, make a note of that tomorrow to uh, give everyone a look on that. Great. Um, moving forward, if we want to make sure there's other resources as well, please do check out the SBDC websites. They are absolutely fantastic, incredible. Um, state partners of ours, and we want to thank everybody uh, in the SBA and the SBDCs for that. Also, our workforce, uh, Arizona Work, um, great, great sites there to uh, take a look at resources. Also, I wanted to make note, Arizona MEP, Manufacturing Extension Program at the ACA, fantastic manufacturing uh, program. And also, uh, we want to highlight Arizona Together, um, absolutely phenomenal resource. This links to multiple, multiple sites uh, throughout the uh, state and, and the governor's uh, activities as well. 
Um, this is being updated every day along with the ACA resource sites as well. So, um, and again, a, a fantastic shout out to the uh, ACA marketing team for just incredible work on the information flow that's going on right now. So stay, stay informed, please, uh, with all of those uh, resources. Um, today, we're super uh, excited to have uh, Derek and Ty and Thomas uh, join us. Um, these are uh, experts in the restaurant industry. They've put together some incredible information on a guide to restart restaurants. Uh, we want to spend time on that today, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions and answers uh, uh, on this session as well. So incredi incredibly dedicated individuals, and we want to thank them again for their leadership on this really, really important topic and an important time for that topic. So without further ado, I think I'm going to pass it along to Ty and Derek uh, and Thomas. Thank you. Hey there, everybody. Um, so Ty here um, with Aw Collective. We're a full service marketing agency based here in Tempe. We work pretty heavily in the hospitality industry. So I see a lot of familiar uh, names actually in the attendees here as well too. Um, and I'm also here with my good friend and colleague and also client, uh, Derek with Kind Hospitality. Say hi, Derek. Hello, everyone. Uh, um, all right, let me see how I share my video. Uh, do I share my screen on my end, or is that something that you guys tossed to me? Yeah, you're going to share your presentation. Oh, yeah. I got it. I got it. Okay, here we go. It's a uh, green, yeah, green share button. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Everyone can see the presentation. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, and again, uh, we also have Thomas here from Local First Arizona. This has been like a really awesome, unique partnership between our three organizations under Local First's leadership. Um, of course, as things move pretty quickly here, um, you know, a lot of it is very reactionary. Um, I think just because there's a shorter amount of time that we have um, just uh, to be able to come up with a strategy to sort of reopen and do it right. And so uh, the, our three organizations kind of came together to uh, collate as much of the information as we could, uh, really pull in best, best practices, um, looking at other states, um, you know, obviously taking guidelines from the CDC, but then also to using uh, local boots on the ground um, expertise from Kind Hospitality, which operates a number of different types of um, of uh, restaurants and eateries and cafes and all that stuff. Um, but uh, the main resource that you guys need to make sure you check out today is we've developed this 20 page, uh, 20 plus page guide that is free to download from Local First, um, Local First website. Uh, it just was launched yesterday. Um, pretty comprehensive, um, pretty easy reading, and uh, it's meant to be really digestible. And it also has different sections because everyone's restaurants obviously have a unique different footprint, um, whether that is uh, fine dining, whether that is um, fast casual, to go, kiosk, all that types of stuff. So there's a lot of different sort of custom um, information and operations, which Derek will cover on his side of things that you definitely have to check out this guide. It's free to download. Um, I think we can probably put it in the chat link as well to you. Um, someone from the ACA can do that. Um, but yeah, make sure you download this guide for sure. So now I'll pass it over to Derek and he'll sort of talk about the operations of opening restaurants and then I'll take over afterwards to talk a little bit more on the marketing side of things. So Derek. Thank you, Ty. Um, you know, obviously when uh, COVID-19 hit, I mean, this is something that our industry has never ever seen. I've been through 9-11 and some other things that, uh, you know, us as economy have gone through in the past, but this is definitely something that no one saw coming and you had to, uh, move quickly and uh, try to um, accommodate uh, basically the new business uh, as we see it today. Uh, so you're, you're basically dipping a toe in both, uh, you know, being strategic versus being tactical. And one of the things that we really want to get into is basically, you know, making that plan um, as a leadership team. And, um, you know, that comes from the top down as part of uh, company ownership, um, executive leadership, actual restaurant leadership uh, because they they have the boots on the ground. Those are the people that are executing this plan that we're putting together. You're trying to bring all facets of the operation together, whether it's marketing with messaging out to both um, your team members as well as um, our guests, but you're also bringing together um, human resources, operations, maintenance. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a full force effort. 
Um, and, and that way you're also getting buy-in. You're getting that buy-in from everyone on board um, that's building this plan from the ground up. And again, it, it, I think the biggest thing is part of why I brought up the you know, strategic versus tactical. You know, there's, it seems like every other day something changes, whether it's you know, the rules of the game or whatever the case may be. You have to be able to adapt whatever situation brings to you as well. So you're going to have to be able to swerve away from the plan that you need, but be able to stick to your core plan um, uh, at its root cause. And, and the biggest thing is you, what you're trying to do is really take care of your two most important um, assets to your business, and that's your guests as well as your team. And, um, you know, safety is always comes first, and that is basically – you know, how we set up this plan moving forward. It, it's safety to both these um, um, areas, and we wanted to make sure that uh, everyone involved um, has buy-in on the process. Let me just jump in real quick on that too. Um, from some of our hospitality clients that are uh, planning to do their reopening, they're not quite there yet. Uh, they literally have an actual document plan that they're sharing with their with their teams. They're getting collaboration with their um, front of the house managers, back of the house managers to see if they've missed any spots and stuff. And so there's good buy-in um, and creating that plan together. Definitely you as a restaurateur leading that, that charge, but, um, but pulling in the team members to sort of put that together. And it's an actual physical document that can be shared with, with the staff and the team members. And, you can, and I can't tell you what a difference that makes with um, any team members' anxieties about coming back in and, and you know, you know, getting on tables and working in the back of the house and all that stuff. They have anxieties about coming back in as well too, but having a plan you know, really, really puts a dent in sort of any sort of like trepidation about that stuff. There's just really strong leadership guidance and it's in an actual physical document, not just sort of, you know, uh, you know, a, a shift briefing or anything like that. It's an actual physical document. I, I think that's a great, and I just want to give you a real life uh, a scenario there. I mean, we sat down with a group of our people when this whole thing started to hit. And, um, you know, we had a few people that basically said, I, I do not want to be part of this. I'm scared. Uh, you know, I have to take care of my family. And, you know, basically you present them the plan just as is. And they, they actually saw if, if the planning is there, everyone's going to be taken care of one way or another. Things do happen, but, you know, at, at least the plan is true. They buy into it um, and it's adopted within the operation. And it, it really works out for the best. Cool. All right, uh, maintain a clean and sanitized environment at all times. And, and really this is uh, you know, something that we did prior to all this as well, but this is something that is really become um, at a heightened uh, level. Uh, you really wanna make sure that everything is not just clean, but sanitized. I mean, you're using peroxide based cleaners. Uh, you're basically going through and ensuring that you are new restaurant clean. And what that means is, you know, those that have been in the restaurant business know and when, you know, that opening day, get, your restaurant is absolutely perfect. You have to get these restaurants back to that, that level, that new restaurant feel and look. And you, you, it just has to be um, just perfect in every single way, both front of the house and back of the house. You just want to make sure that everything that um, anyone can touch is part of the sanitation process, both from um, a guest perspective as well as a team member perspective. And we want to make sure, you know, you're trying to do everything you can to eliminate um, a lot of the um, touching of the items. If you have um, disposable menus, obviously that's something that you can roll out. Um, and if you don't, obviously that's part of the sanitation uh, process uh, after every single touch point uh, from the guests as well as um, your team members. Uh, you want to make sure if you have technology within the business, you want to also make sure that uh, you're doing everything you can to ensure that uh, that is touchless as well. I mean, if you go through a drive-through, uh, you know, a lot of times they're sticking the credit card readers outside the windows for you to place it in directly now. Um, you know, we also have micro uh, 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 biobial, uh screens that on our uh, grab-and-go units that uh, you can pre-order and prepay from. Uh, and so that way, you know, everything is as safe as possibly can. And then obviously you're putting everything on a uh, cleaning schedule. You know, everything at the top and bottom of the hours or if you're putting things on coffee timers, you just want to make sure that that sanitation schedule is being adhered to every 30 minutes, at, if not sooner. And, and you actually have someone dedicated as part of that process that's overseeing that and ensuring that, um, again, that both the guests as well as your own team members are always uh, being safe at all time. 
And you're trying to make everything as contact-free as possible. That includes sanitation um, or sanitizer at the front of uh, the restaurants, including the back as much as possible. And you're also um, just doing everything you can to make sure that everything is as clean and uh, again, going back to the uh, you know sanitized uh, word as much as possible. Uh, and then again, you're always uh, uh, following, uh, you know, Governor Ducey has done a great job in ensuring that, uh, you know, a lot of the direction has come down. We wanna make sure that the CDC, uh, you know, a lot of our direction comes down from them. And again, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to keep uh, all involved safe. Real quick. Um... Just a quick reminder for participants and viewers, um, you can definitely drop in your questions um, that we'll get to you after the presentation. So feel free to drop in questions if you haven't already. And then uh, Derek, just for context, so everyone kind of just knows a little bit more about kind hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just give a little context about maybe the types of restaurants that you operate, just so that way they know what they can be asking you perhaps um, at the end as well. Yeah, that's a great question, Ty. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Kind Hospitality is pretty diversified. Uh, you know, our two major brands are Mikhail's Mexican Restaurants, as well as Panera Bread. We are a franchisee of Panera. We also have Barrio Brewery, Oso Brewery. We have a couple other brands within our portfolio. Uh, so we kind of run the whole gamut of casual dining to uh, bar exposure to USR to walk up component. Uh, we actually um, had vending uh, at a point in time this year as well. So that is, I mean, we run everything within food and beverage business, um, you know, every different type of uh, vehicle uh, that that, that uh, applies to. So, uh, you know, kind, like I said, is, um, is so we really have to um, incorporate our plan and customize it every different style of our restaurants. And, and that just doesn't mean floor plans or anything like that. But, you know, we, we deal with drive throughs we deal with walk up, we deal with casual dining, which obviously just uh, opened up this week. So, um, you know, with, with kind hospitality, it's, it's been fun, it's been challenging. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's definitely something that um, uh, we'll always remember, but it's definitely something that on the other side of this we'll be stronger for. Cool, thank you. Um, the next item, uh, maintain proper social distancing guidelines at all times. Uh, I, I think this is a big one, especially right now. Uh, you know, we have to, uh, especially with dining rooms opening up right now, this is definitely something where prior to this week, uh, we were doing all takeout and to go from our Mikhail's restaurants. Um, everything was single use items. Everything was wrapped. Um, obviously, this is something that we want to make sure that um, our customer uh, was still, we were still able to serve the community, but we also wanted to make sure that uh, we were keeping everyone safe. As we uh, process through this week, and we are looking to open up uh, end of this week and the first of next week, you know, we've had to make some changes, you know, Open Table is our reservation, our online uh, reservation form, and we and we basically sent them new floor plans. You know, take out uh, uh, a lot of our tables and chairs that uh, accommodate. Um, you know, a better social distancing measures that we uh, put into place. You're spacing your floor plans a, a little bit better. We also um, have uh, required that all uh, parties have to be ten or less. We've actually had many calls this week trying to set up um, uh, some reservations. You know, some that were larger than 10, we made an offer that, uh, you know, we can accommodate you, we can break you up into say parties of uh, eight or whatever the case may be, um, but we can't uh, go larger than 10. Uh, that also includes our, our bars that we have. Um, we wanted to make sure that uh, we're trying to keep our bar stools uh, separated as much as possible. We also um, have put some table reminders saying, again, thank you very much. This table is part of our social distancing um, uh, measures. We want to make sure that we keep this empty for uh, the time being. Um, we also want to make sure that uh, we're encouraging reservations prior, you know, so we could hopefully space, uh, space out our uh, traffic flow a little bit better, um, whether it's right when we open or later at night or whatever the case may be. And to be honest with you, our guests have been absolutely fabulous about understanding the situation um, at hand. They have been completely um, great about uh, trying to accommodate uh, everything that we have been asking them to accommodate. Again, uh, just trying to stick to the rules as much as possible. So, uh, you know, a great thing just for Mother's Day th this last Sunday, um, we actually had people entering our restaurants for their pickup through our patios. And we actually lined our patios with social distancing. 
we put um, circles on the ground, giving everyone six feet around. Uh, so they have that spacing available. We filtered everyone back out through the, the front door, which is a, a one-way exit, no entry. And it, was, it worked out absolutely fabulous. We, uh, we actually got some very great comments from our guests uh, for, for basically uh, understanding and enforcing the social distancing guidelines. Derek, we got about maybe three, four minutes on your end. Okay, I'll speed up. I apologize. <laughs> no, uh, pri <laughs> uh, prioritize health and wellness of uh, hygiene of your staff members. Basically, you know, it is part of our uh, uniform policy now to wear gloves, wear masks, obviously, washing your hands for 20 seconds, you know, sing the ABCs or happy birthday, whatever the case may be. That was all prior COVID. Um, we also ensure that, and, and the awareness is there, not just from our team members, but everyone else around. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we are, uh, following and monitoring the uh, CDC guidelines. Uh, the next item is take every available precaution with regard to food safety. I mean, this has always been a, a forefront, uh, a, a pinnacle of one of our responsibilities as a restaurateur. We just want to make sure that food is always safe, but we also, also want to make sure all the certifications are up to date, and that always has been up to date. Um, obviously, we don't have salad bars, and we didn't have to discontinue that, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, there's retraining that has to be provided as part of this as well. We want to retrain our team members uh, with the curbside and to-go services, the safe handling, the packaging, you know, the practices, the, the one-time use, um, you know, cutlery, things like that, that we really want to make sure that, um, that uh, you know, we're taking care of everyone involved. Again, and having enough stock on hand that we have so people can take off gloves, wash hands, put gloves back on, you know, obviously the paper towels that you use to dry your hands, enough sanitizer. You want to make sure that your stock is very, very, high um, as you progress through this uh, this uh, moment and obviously get your restaurants open. Awesome. Well, Derek, thanks so much. And then again, anyone that has any operations focused questions, make sure you drop them in the chat box for Derek and we can answer them. I'll go through my section pretty quickly. Again, my focus is more on sort of marketing and communications and sort of how we message uh, when you're ready. Um, uh, and kind of how to approach that. So if you have questions on the marketing or messaging side of things, on the public relations side of things, media, all that stuff, um, strategy, marketing in general, drop that in the box or in the chat box for me. I'll go as quickly as I can so that way we can get to the questions. So I think that's where you're going to get the most out of this, uh, this uh, presentation. So um, this seems like pretty, pretty basic, thanking your fans. Um, I think that uh, uh, you know, there's something about you know taking that downtime right now that we've all had to take in one way or another, whether that's you know completely shutting our operations down or um, switching over to to go. Uh, leading with the messaging of just saying thank you so much. Um, you know I think we're so belabored by just all of the negative messaging around it and using key trigger words, which I'll get to here in a second. And simply just starting off with your messaging by just saying thank you, and maybe even just that's the only message you need to start with period in its own message and its own email that goes out in its own source. simple straightforward thank you i shared something in another webinar that uh my spin, my spin gym that i go to uh, typically three to four times a week they just wrote a hand uh handwritten card to me my spin instructor my favorite one and mailed that to me it took time to mail that to me and with no call to action with no like you know sign up now or a gift card or anything else like that it was just it was a simple thank you and it made such a just a brand loyalty sort of difference and it really sort of made my day i posted it on social tagged them in it they reshared it um and i saw that they had been resharing a ton of them uh, of other posts as well too so it really definitely made people's day to sort of just have that sort of like note coming from a brand that they absolutely loved um one thing to note too is that it's, it's okay to not be ready i mean there's, there's a lot of planning that's going into this and i think uh we're seeing a lot of restaurants that are doing the putting together uh I'm, for sure, definitely shouldn't be something that's going to be rushed. And that's why I think you definitely, everyone should download this guide that we have provided for you. It's a great start to customizing your own plan, um, so that you're ready. Um, and, and again, like that's totally your call. You, you get to sort of make that decision. Um, and again, some really great, uh, really, really taking the time to do that. I would give super credit to Derek too for helping to this guide, uh, adding that expertise in there um, and, and uh, creating just a really good go-to leaping off point. So when you're ready to do it, you've got resources. Also Local First um, definitely has a ton of resources. Obviously ACA as well too. There's just so much around us right now that it's really a cool community effort to sort of see everyone kind of just dogpiling on this. 
Uh, when you're ready to sort of do that messaging, um, I'm really big on sort of humanizing the message. It shouldn't be like a statement. I see too many social posts that are just really, really technical. It sounds like a PR person wrote it. It's almost like a uh, official press statement or something like that. Um, and it just doesn't feel real. This is hospitality. People want, you know, we're all looking forward to the time where like, um, you know, we get to sort of have a, a more typical dining experience. Who knows how that will actually shake out in the future, but uh, we do that because we love the socialization of it. So humanizing the message, using your iPhone, doing a video. I see a lot of this um, with a lot of really smaller uh, boutique uh, hospitality uh, brands and just little mom and pop eateries, and they're doing it so well. Um, so it, when you're ready to share that message that you're going to be reopening, sharing the message about sort of like what you're doing, um, show the space, um, how the space looks, it's, how it's different, show your faces of your team. Um, also like the idea, rather than just talking about all the things that you're, you're having to do to prep, I mean, everyone is going to make an assumption that you're going to be, if you're reopening, that you're doing the right steps. Show the process of reopening, show how you're changing things inside the space. You don't have to necessarily narrate it and just sort of just, you know, use that, that white noise language of how we're, you know, preparing for your, uh, your safety and all that stuff. I mean, they're going to, if you can show that through um, people actually doing, and I think that has a more sort of connecting message versus, again, some sort of really canned statement that's in an email or a social post or something. Uh, no, it should be fun. People are, are ready to come and see you. Um, and so show them your face, show them your voice, let them hear you, let them see the staff, let them see the space that they love. Um, speaking of love, uh, show the love. I mean, there's really easy ways to sort of just like give a little extra perk and incentivize people when you're ready to reopen to come in and, and give it a shot, uh, check out the space, check out the new environment, um, the new experience. Uh, one thing I love to do with uh, clients is do like uh, uh, just a really cost friendly, um, like little food gift, whether that is like, um, like we've had something as simple as for some of our uh, grab and go clients, they, they'll just do a giant sheet cake which is super cost effective, easy to do, easy to batch, all that stuff. And then uh, sending guests home with that for appreciation and things like that. So think of like little easy little things like that, that just, um, I love those too, because I call them like just like little sleeper bombs because uh, that little gift that you send them home with uh, sits in their refrigerator um, for either that later that night or that next day. And that refrigerator is your battleground. They're choosing to whether to go out to eat or whether to stay home and cook and eat something out of the fridge. Well, now you've inserted your brand inside that fridge where this battleground is. So uh, yeah, try to zip through this real quick. Um, so a couple things to avoid. Um, I would not mention the words like pandemic, COVID, outbreak, any of that stuff. Everyone knows the problem that we're all going through right now. So just focus on the solution. Um, I, just, I really would love to see brands stop using these words because you just don't need to be necessarily associated with it. Um, and then also I would limit the word safety too because you know it's, it's good to talk about it maybe once, maybe twice, but I feel like that uh, gets that sort of eclipses everything else. Let's talk about the hospitality again. This is why this is what we do, why we do what we do. Um, and even things like uh, in, in these uncertain times, you probably have heard a million commercials using this uh, language and it starts to become white noise. Um, just talk about the hospitality, welcome these people back. Um, it, uh, that should just be good vibes. And again, like they're gonna make an assumption that you're checking all the right boxes. If you show them that too, through video, you don't have to say these things and they don't have to associate it with, with your brand. I'm gonna zip right through this. Uh, we already talked about this internal communications. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, getting a chance to sort of celebrate the wins, you know, after your first shifts, uh, when you choose to reopen, um, you know, talk about, you know, areas that you feel like you need to improve. Um, Talk away what they feel about the new operations too. This, this is a whole new normal for their maybe their careers and they've been working in the industry for 30 plus years. This is so different. Um, as a leader, I mean, that's something you really want, you want to spend time talking to them about. And then again, like resources again and again. Um, cool little things are happening right now, like Phoenix Magazine on Instagram. If you tag them in a post for your restaurant, they're resharing those on their stories um, just to show the local love. And they've got a huge reach as well too. Uh, from a publicist perspective, like sending a note to media it doesn't have to be a full press release. It could just be like, hey, well, I'll just give you an update. My, my cafe is opening on, on Friday and I'd love to chat with you about it if you have a second. Um, super simple like that. You don't need a publicist. Not that I'm trying, trying to talk myself out of a job, but uh, this is all stuff that you can definitely DIY to. And of course, you will connect it with Local First and ACA with all their great resources. Um, checklist of channels here, and then you guys will have access to this sort of a punch list and stuff after this, so I don't have to necessarily go through it, but this is all the stuff that you probably already did if you're doing takeout, but just a, a quick reminder on all that stuff. The things that maybe you haven't done is like promote via your vendor channels um, or like your location, if you're located in like a major plaza that has its own marketing um, uh, 
channels and, and budget, all that stuff. And then even your team social media too, like uh, your, if your staff members feel comfortable sharing um, the fact that they're, hey, I'm back to work, um, come see me kind of stuff. Uh, if they feel that's okay and, and they feel good about it, if it's appropriate, that's a great way to sort of really humanize the message. Um, so I will stop talking. I wanted to get as much time in, as possible with Q&A. I think we're one minute past uh, our goal. So um, I'll leave it. I think Andy was gonna uh, perhaps moderate the questions. Yeah, um, go ahead. We have a, a Q&A section up there. I think there was a restaurant association question if we're seeing a drop off in restaurant apps. I don't have the answer to that one, but maybe uh, someone here does. Uh, what was that? I'll Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and answer that a little bit. I mean, obviously here in Arizona, we, you know, we're coming out of season. So people tend to um, move away uh, from our seasonality. Uh, you know, as soon as the heat hits, uh, people like to go over to California for a little bit or move over to obviously another state. Um, so obviously our back of the house positions are a tough position to fill. Um, the great thing is um, our team gathered as part of that planning uh, process I had talked about, a lot of our cooks and back of the house personnel, um, basically we did lower the hours a little bit, but we try to accommodate as many people as possible. And part of the planning process as well, we actually created schedules as a 25, 50, 75% of the business. So we wanted to make sure, you know, we had a look ahead. So if we needed to add a person or bring a couple other people back on, you know, the good thing is you can plan and see that coming. Um, the bad thing is, and this is a separate issue, is you know some people don't didn't want to come back to work, so because you know the unemployment benefits were so great, so that is a challenge. But um, we have not seen that yet. In fact, we're gearing up, like I said, to open up uh, many of our dining rooms here this uh, this week and next, and we have not experienced that as of yet. Great, right, Dirk. Thank you. Hey, Thomas, I wanted to do a shout out to you and see if you had um, a local first perspective and maybe just an update and give us kind of a scan from your world. Yeah, so, um, and thank you, Ty and Derek, for everything you're sharing. Super important. And for those of you listening, they're really just touching the surface here. There's a lot of things I'm sure you're probably thinking about. We're hearing a lot of different things that restaurants, local restaurants are considering um, as they start to reopen and plan to reopen, uh, there's just a lot of different adaptations that um, you're gonna be needing to think about making. We've seen everything from uh, Huss Brewery, I know has invested in printing um, uh, uh, on the floor um, um, uh, notices on how far apart you are from others so that you can stay six feet apart when you're standing in line or when you're um, waiting to go to the restroom. So those are the types of things uh, you might consider. Um, you might, you need to consider your single use menus or even making your menu um, more easily viewable um, on mobile or on a computer before people come to your restaurants. Um, making sure that you have an easy way for people to call you or make a reservation if that's something you wanna do. And then um, also Derek, um, I was wondering if you might be able to touch on some of the considerations, um, uh, fast casual and or cafes and coffee shops, um, even restaurants might consider the types of roles and staff that they need to adapt. Um, for example, a barista who traditionally might handle cash and credit cards and then turn around and make a drink is, you know, is that going to be a role that's still um, going to be acceptable in the eyes of a consumer or do they need to adapt a little more and, and kind of rethink how those tasks are, are executed in their, in their stores? Well, I, that's a good question. I, I think um, you want to make sure that you're staffing to what the business is demanding at that point. So if that means bringing an extra person on and that person's the only one handling, and again, going to the barista situation, since we do have some baristas, you know, you want to make sure that one person is handling the product, the other person is handling the POS, you know, and one thing that you have to do is that there are some changes, you know, after each uh, cash transaction, you want to make sure that those gloves are being changed out, hands are being washed, and then right back to it. Um, that is a change, um, even though our credit card usage is about 80-20, and usually that's kind of standardized out there. So cash has, um, uh, you know, become a little bit less. But, the, you know, the training behind it has increased just because of the fact that there's a lot more 
to it nowadays. So again, that kind of answer your question, you want to make sure that your staffing is matching what the business is demanding at that point. And if that means bringing an extra body and you can float or redeploy that person uh, to another uh, location where they can actually uh, kind of help out, say, with a topping bar or, uh, you know, they're helping out with an expo line or whatever the case may be. And then they're hopping between two or three different points. But if you're really that busy, you can probably afford bringing an extra uh, person at that point. Great. Um, some of the other things, you know, we're having restaurants consider are how you might be able to get to some economies of scale for some of the extra costs that you might um, have to endure and able to, if you're um, going to open. Um, for example, um, if you're considering getting any plexiglass to put up as dividers um, when people are making orders at counters. Um, what other restaurants regionally around you um, in your same building are going to have to make those purchases too? Could you go in on a bulk purchase order and, and get the economies of scale to get all of those uh, for you? Is there anything your landlord or the building owner could do to help negotiate some of those things for you? Um, you could think the same way as far as, as cleaning goes. Um, are you needing a cleaning company to now to come in every every evening? Would your landlord help you negotiate or, or can you work with other tenants around you to negotiate a cleaning company to come through um, and take care of all of your properties? I think this is a great opportunity to think of the collaboration that you can have, not only from a marketing perspective, but from an operational perspective as, as you've got some added costs um, in, in coming to reopen too. Derek, Ty, I don't know if you're seeing anything like that as well. I, I mean, yeah. go ahead, Ty. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, I think you're heading down the path of one community. We're all in this together. And I think that's a great, um, you know, basically uh, put out there it, where basically a lot of restaurateurs out there are banding together and see what, you know, collaborative efforts can happen within the workplace, you know, both inside your, your four walls and, and outside. Uh, so it really, I, it, it's, it's, it's with all about the relationships that you form within you know the the community itself and um, obviously there are some landlords that uh, really really are active in that participation process and it, it's actually been a, a fun ride with those uh, those landlords individually so um, it, it's definitely something you know we're all in this together what can we do to get uh, get through this together hey, Derek, uh, Andy here. I have a question um, that I'm sure you guys have done a lot of number crunching and looking at um, information on reduction of available uh, seats, you know, if you have to uh, do social distancing, what impact is that going to have and what are some of the techniques that you guys are using to mitigate that impact? So with the seats that um, came out, obviously, you know, I, we don't think the dining rooms are going to fill up right away. Obviously, you know, you'll see different pictures out there on social media of of different restaurants kind of just going crazy at the moment. But, you know, people will st still want to take to go. People will still want to take that um, item outside of the restaurant just because over the last two, two and a half months, three months, it's that's been the norm. So that will still continue, obviously, as things get back to what I guess the new term is the new norm. Um, you know, obviously, what you're trying to do is uh, counterbalance all that. I mean, there was a restaurant tour I was reading about, I believe is in Ohio, uh, the gentleman had put shower rods and shower curtains around every single um, table. And um, it was a see-through shower curtain. And, you know, obviously he gets a definitely A plus for effort. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you, you just, you can't, you have to be able, and it goes back to that planning process. You have to be able to uh, accommodate what today brings you and be able to change for tomorrow. And so basically what you're trying to do is stick with the to-go, balance out your reservation process where you're getting people in more uh, during the down times rather than the peak times. And then you're trying to uh, basically even out your flow of people coming in and out of your restaurant. Great. And, and have you, Derek, seen any, you know, significant shifts from your business models before with curbside and to-go? Or were you guys already really in that zone prior to, you know, COVID? I, with our um, casual dining restaurants, we saw the biggest shift. Obviously, we went from a 85 15% mix of dine-in versus takeout 
to 100% takeout. So um, it, it was, that's a, a major shift and you had to shift on the fly. And again, every day the rules were changing a little bit. But it, it, Obviously what you're trying to do is uh, train the people up that you have, accommodate the guests. And again, it's all done with a smile and with safety and, and trying to make sure that, um, you know, the business can accommodate uh, what the community is offering at that point. Yeah, so I've been a, a consumer of the curbside. I kind of mm -hmm. joke with my team. I, I really have gone out and um, used a lot of curbside. I got to tell you, I love it. Um, I really enjoyed, you know, the idea of going into a restaurant. I love that. But I also, you know, if you're working late or you're working a lot, you just drive up, have somebody do it. Do you see that um, longer term as a model for your restaurants? Or is that going to, as, as you get busier inside the restaurant, kind of, remove that well service. i don't think yeah i don't i don't think um our restaurants will ever be the same um or go back to what they were so it, it's really um it's going to be a modification of what it is today uh whether we come back as a 60 40 split or even something else comes down the line where there's another third party vehicle that's you know basically moving uh, the food out to, to our public, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Obviously, we are trying to be creative in, in uh, accommodating our guest re requests while doing it safely, but we also want to make sure that it, it makes sense um, as a business entity, and we're really trying to do that um, carefully um, while keeping safety a, as a top concern, but I, I, I don't think, um, you know, obviously nothing's going to change on the short term, I think things are going to continue the way they are, and as traffic uh, increases to the dining room as as well as the bars, uh, I, I think I'm hoping. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, my crystal ball has been very cloudy of late, but uh, you know, all you can do is plan for the best. Awesome, thank you. Hey, Ty, one question for you um, with regards to um, the entire marketing sphere what would you say are the number one or two areas that you're seeing the need for restaurants to either pick it up or improve on or add to their arsenal yeah um it's tough i have a lot of friends in the restaurant industry that are clients um and uh they're they're kind of learning uh, in a very hard way that um, you know, there, there are some business owners that are really um, kind of against any kind of sort of database marketing, whether that's email marketing or text or anything like that. Uh, and the, the complaint that I get and pushback I get from clients uh, when we have to convert them is like, oh, like I hate getting emails myself. So I don't want to be that person that sends stuff out. Well, you know, uh, I'll tell you like some, uh, all of my clients um, have a 20,000 person plus, 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 plus email database of fans and prior customers that they can message at any given time and get the word out. And uh, so if, if anyone has not, uh, if anyone has been nervous about building a database, um, mining information out of OpenTable, um, collecting emails in a check presenter, uh, doing a pop-up on the website, like uh, it's never too late. You know, you know, it's, it's, this is not going to change. You're going to need to, it's going to be harder to remarket to your audience more than ever. Um, uh, it's going to be such a crowded space now from a digital, digital perspective. So the more that you can harvest a client's data and use it, contact directly, uh, it's not a negative. And I think that a lot of people do, again, you know, we all hate spam, of course, but these people are opting in. They love your brand. They love your food. They love you so much. They love the hospitality. Um, they love to hear from you. If they didn't, they wouldn't sign up for it. So uh, uh, database building is always going to be my go-to for, for restaurant marketing, period. You work so hard to get that customer through the door and give them a really great experience. Uh, we see statistically that uh, when you uh, collect that email address, it takes that diner from being a once a quarter diner to three to four times per quarter uh, as a diner and then also to bring in more people in with them so if you just compound those numbers and see how much that could change your business it's huge especially now too um i'll tell you like for our, our typically in a normal season uh our clients during summertime um you could walk into any one of our uh upscale casual clients where everyone else is kind of a little more quiet and snoozy um there's going to be half hour wait to get into on a tuesday night for dinner at our clients because we're leveraging that database um, in such a great way. Uh, the client that I'm referring to has over 60,000 
email addresses here from just local customers. So I'm always going to be crazy and, and just be, uh, go for uh, go big on um, uh, database marketing. Uh, same thing for text is obviously more for fast casual for sure. Um, that's been a really great success um, for a lot of our clients, but harvesting and collecting uh, clients' data when they opt in for it um, and contact information and then using that on a regular basis um, in a great way, not too much, is always going to be my go-to. Outside of that, of course, social is going to be a great medium. One thing that I really love about, uh, you know, you have to look at the positives through this whole situation, is that people are starting to lose their fear of video, um, getting on camera and just really having fun. Obviously, TikTok is exploding and that's not going to go away. That's going to be sort of, you know, again, the new norm. Um, but I think restaurants going to miss that. doesn't necessarily have to be TikTok, but also to just again, I think the humanizing of, of faces, people are so desperate to connect. Um, and so rather than doing, you know, fancy graphics and things like that on your Instagram feed, you know, really doing um, strong connected videos, uh, doing lives. Uh, I love seeing, um, I kind of monitor a lot of uh, hospitality trends across the, the US and I love seeing like uh, virtual cooking classes where um, in Chicago, um, there is a restaurant that was doing these like take home kits, basically sort of like those freshly or like a uh, blue apron type stuff where you could come and pick them up to go and it had all the sort of the ingredients, all the and plots sort of like ready for you to go. And it just was like assembly. And then everyone would do a, uh, a zoom together. Um, and everyone would cook at the same time and they sell out every single time. Um, like in an instant. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's cool. Um, so I think connecting via video is going to be like sort of a new normal. I think all of us are sort of sort of letting down our guard about being nervous about, you know, taking a selfie if we were nervous about it. I mean, that's just, we're used to now being on camera. Like we're all on it right now. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, social ad buys too are going to be important uh, just because the amount of traffic now um, and usage on social channels uh, is so high. Organic tends to get pushed down. So that's why it's important to do video because it you know, gets a higher ranking like, from organically from an organic perspective, but also to a small ad buy for a restaurant. Let's say you budgeted, um, you know, up to 500 bucks a month. I mean, you know it sounds up. Uh, either like a lot or a little depending on your situation, but 500 bucks is a great sort of like baseline, maybe make it 300 bucks a month. Uh, We're really pushing, uh, you know, a really cool video that you did and sort of, you know, either boosting it or really doing that big call to action to sort of crescendo up to your reopening. Um, so those would be sort of like the, the major ways that I would go for as well too. And especially of course to um, exterior signage is just easy, cost effective, 10,000%. Uh, just a quick uh, check in on ad spend. Is that um, more value for the money now? Or has there been a dramatic change on ad spend? Uh, there has been a really dramatic change on ad spend. Um, if anything, uh, on digital, it's, it's probably not too much different, but in more traditional channels, uh, now's the time to get a really great deal. Um, you know, everyone's budgets uh, has really frozen up. So if you were exploring doing outdoor advertising, like billboard and things like that, um, you know, they're, they're really hungry for business right now. Um, and uh, so you, you, things that might have been outside of your price range, it's worth sort of looking into uh, to take a peek. Things that you, you know, visited one time, maybe five years ago for an ad spend on more traditional channels. Um, might, you might find some really screaming deals right now for sure. That's great. Good point. Well, let's, um, uh, let's ask for last comments and see if we can go around and any uh, parting comments from each of the three of you would be great for us. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just uh, start. Um, so I think that the underscoring um, message that we're delivering to local restaurants that are looking to reopen is um, as you consider your long term plans for pivoting your business, um, be looking at the things that worked during um, the last two months and see how you can continue to infuse those into your business long term. And I'll give an example of actually a non-local restaurant that's doing something right now that's incredibly innovative and creative and likely going to be something that we'll see um, them do forever. Um, and the example is actually from the Phoenix Zoo. Um, they started last week doing a drive-through zoo um, after being closed for six weeks. Um, they originally started with the plans to do it three days a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sold out the first three weeks um, and then moved it to be seven days a week, um, just uh, three days ago. So as you can imagine, Arizona, Phoenix, it's hot in the summer, right? This is the first time they've ever done this. 
Um, and now they're selling out every single day, 600 cars. Um, just that pivot alone is probably going to really save that, that organization um, through a time of crisis. But how are, may they be planning to actually implement that every summer now, right? So if there were things that you infused into your business during the crisis that worked, whether that's family to go, um, menu packages, um, picnic in the park packages, um, uh, daily themes that you can sell to go. Um, don't just wipe those away and try to transition to just being an in-person restaurant or business again. Continue to think through how you can innovate, pivot, and infuse those things into your business model long-term because like Derek's saying, like Ty's saying, things are, are not going to be the same um, moving forward. You're going to have to continue pivoting and continue adapting um, as the entrepreneurs that you are. So I really love that. Um, taking the innovations that we've learned over the last couple of months and really carrying those forward, critical. I love that. Derek or Ty, do you have um, any parting uh, words of wisdom for us? Derek? Yeah, I, I, I just thought that this was a great uh, process. Thank you for uh, inviting me on. Um, I'm hoping that we just gave you a little snapshot into kind hospitality and what we do and what we have been doing. Um, you know, obviously our industry uh, may never be the same again, but it's how we roll with the punches and how we stay together as a community and, and is how we're going to come out on the, on the other side of this. So uh, again, thank you very much for the, this, uh, this forum and it was a great process and looking forward to seeing what everyone else out there is doing too. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for me as well, too. Um, this has been a really fun project to collaborate with everybody here um, on the presenter side of things. Uh, I have to really, really press upon everyone to download that guide. It's, you know, we've only scratched the surface of uh, how comprehensive that guide is, has ideas in there, has really strong applicable uh, uh, tactics and operations, implementation, uh, best practices for all different sizes of restaurants and eateries. Uh, one last thing I wanted to share to you is um, that uh, I'm trying to tell and convince a lot of my clients that uh, it's as we start to approach reopening is that everyone gets sort of like a kind of a get out of jail free card. Um, when you envisioned your business and you envisioned your restaurants, you know, when you first opened it, however many years you recently, um, you know, you could close your eyes and think about what it was going to look like. And now when you close your eyes and open your eyes, it's going to look different and like, that's, you have to sort of like lean into that. Um, you know, you, you get sort of that, give yourself that get out of jail free card because also the guests too are not expecting a normal dining service. So you're able to sort of like flex a little bit, be a little bit different. One of the things that we're having uh, that we're uh, suggesting to one of our clients is just to ease up on operations rather than passing out um, menus and then having to deal with either sanitizing them or having disposable and just having another operations headache is that uh, because it is like a super casual uh, sort of cafe concept is taking the actual tables that the guests seat at and uh, wrapping the entire top of the table with, uh, with a, uh, a vinyl wrap um, that's uh, wipeable and all that stuff. But the wrap itself, um, you know, has a lot of cool brand messaging and all that stuff. But the cool thing that it has is where everywhere where someone sits, it has the actual full menu there. So that way, I mean, the past menus around, we're not throwing away stuff, we're not having inventory, we're not, we're just cleaning a table. Um, and it's a fully sanitizable uh, type of material, um, but it also has to have some front bit brand messaging. It's not exactly restaurant had a thing, but it's a good cost effective way to do it. So one investment, they last three to four years there. Um, but just thinking more creatively and in, in, in yourself, uh, that sort of get out of jail free card that the, the restaurant that I'd always envisioned to open uh, might look a little bit different, but that's not a bad thing because the guests are ready for that. Um, they're ready to see cool things like that kind of idea. Or another client is exploring doing uh, 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 from the ceiling hanging like large menu boards that um, you know if you've got around the the, the, the restaurant so that way you don't touch anything. Everyone can kind of look at it and not have to again sanitize anything. So it, it changes the look and the feel of the restaurant. But, um, you know, when things start to sort of tick away a little bit, you know, it's easy to unmount those and sort of go back to maybe perhaps um, the, the normal menu style. So uh, 
Uh, thanks again for everyone for uh, having us on here. Definitely download that guide. Thanks to Thomas and Derek and the Commerce Authority for just being great partners in all this. And I think all of us would be available too if anyone has any sort of individual questions, anything operations for Derek, anything sort of resources for Thomas, anything marketing and messaging uh, for me. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much, Ty. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Thomas. Really do appreciate this. Was great information. Um, for everyone out there, we'll be recording this. It'll be posted up on our website, azcommerce.com forward slash COVID. We will also be posting the guide as well as the uh, decks that were used here. Um, go ahead and check that out. And tomorrow we're going to be doing um, National Safety Council, uh, Return to Work Safely. Uh, it's a really important topic. And then on Friday, we're doing marketing. So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Great session today. Derek, Ty, Thomas, really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.